Trash Power Biogas gets plasma powered. That's 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 the thumbnail, folks, right there. Trash Power Biogas gets plasma powered. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. <clears throat> now, before I get to this story, <clears throat> I'm gonna set it up a little bit. We're gonna be talking about introducing plasma and biomass, inducing plasma. And biomass could make biogas easier to produce. So there you go. Biomass guy, biogas, biomass guy, biogas, biomass, biogas. So what is biogas? Now I just called it trash power. Trash power, that is biogas, gets plasma powered. And it is, it is a very particular type of trash. It's organic trash. <clears throat> so this is uh, organic waste. All your useless parts of the animals the vegetables whatever you throw them into a a, a, a little uh, a little thingy whatever your thingy is and then the thingy breaks it down and it turns it into biogas and what is biogas used for well, there you go the gas methane the gases methane hydrogen and carbon monoxide can be combusted or oxidized with oxygen the inner release allows biogas to be used as fuel it can be used for any heating purposes such as cooking <coughs> it can also be used in gas engine to convert the energy in the gas into electricity and heat. How is biogas produced? Biogas is produced through the processing of various types of organic waste. Digestion carried out by these microorganisms creates methane, which can be used as it is locally or upgraded to biogas equivalent to natural gas quality, enabling the transport of the biogas over long distances. Wow. Digestion carried out by these microorganisms create met creates methane. And that's what we're talking about. <clears throat> and we're talking about biogas being, well, a little expensive, but look, there, there, there's things that are, uh, <clears throat> oh, I should uh, give you this title. There you go. There you go. There you go. So now you can see all that stuff. And, all right, new partnership will, this is from the Delaware Business Times from September 10th, 2020. New partnership will convert chicken waste into biogas. And another move that will diversify renewable energy options, Chesapeake Utilities Corp will be partnering with <coughs> Clean Bay Renewables to distribute natural gas recycled from thousands of chickens on the Del Marva Peninsula. Clean Bay Renewables will soon turn chicken litter, manure, and bedding materials into biogas or a type of natural gas that contains mostly methane. I don't need to read any more of that. <clears throat> Their story here. Monday, September 7th, 2020. This is from Renewable Energy Magazine. <coughs> EnviroTac partners with Renergon International on biogas projects. Egyptian company EnviroTac, EnviroTac for Sustainable Environmental Services and Renewable Energy has partnered with the Swiss company Renergon International AG to become the only licensed company in Egypt to utilize dry fermentation technology. That's interesting. The partnership aims to provide state-of-the-art turnkey key technology solutions of course it's always turnkey they'll just arrive set it up and you'll be able to train you how to use it and boom there you go for turning organic waste into renewable energy for producing both biogas and electricity as well as organic fertilizers <coughs> multi-purpose with the uh, bio waste. The partnership sets the tone of cooperation between the two organizations and contains several collaborations that include creating and developing biogas plants with various capacities, starting from 50 kilowatts and up to five megawatts using the advanced dry fermentation technology and biogas. Well, that's interesting. So what is <clears throat> that dry fermentation? I don't know, but Getting a little bit too far afield here to the store here. We can talk about that another time, folks. We're going to venture back to Eureka Alert here. Inducing plasma in biomass could make biogas easier to produce. Now you're getting the connections. Now you get what we're talking about. With the help of microwave pulses, plasma induced into polymer solutions <coughs> helps break down thick material lowering the viscosity and possibly breaking polymer chains. 
This is from September 22nd. Producing biogas from the bacterial breakdown of biomass presents options for a greener energy future. I don't really care about this, this crap. I don't care about this. What I do care about is the self-sustainability, self-reliability, and uh, in in the sense that, uh, if, well, when they say greener, they mean a whole bunch of things that I don't mean. But uh, in terms of the practicality, well, <laughs> in terms of the practicality of creating uh, methodologies for humans to be able to uh, essentially recycle their use as much as possible, to use as much as they use as much as possible, until they beat it down into dust rather than pile it up into uh, more and more loads of debris that uh, continue to reduce our capacity to be harmonious with the land that we live on. Not for any <clears throat> ideal, but for practical reasons. The, the self-sustainability of the organism relies upon the, uh, you know, basically it's like, you know, we want to keep our living room clean and healthy. This is our freaking living room, so... So in that sense, I'm. This is what I'm about. This biogas for. Imagine I can imagine neighborhoods having their own biogas centers, where especially with this new technology, maybe it'll make it uh, even more practical. Everybody just routinely, you gather your waste and you uh, maybe you just take. You probably just take it up yourselves, maybe once a week. Uh, it'll be more uh, <coughs> more uh, well reduce the overall cost. You wouldn't have to have a truck and people and all you just have people go up yourselves go, go dump the way you're just dump, dumping the waste and you're contributing to your community because that's going to create power that is available for the stuff that the community uses neighborhood resources as well as backup power for people that have issues with power at home and as much as possible we want our folks to be self-sustaining at home we want them to be able to provide their own power for the most part but if they need backup power then stuff like this can provide it and in addition to that we're burning stuff up in a much healthier way for, for, for the environment and uh, for ourselves and everything, all, all the good. So cellulose and woody ling lignocellulose and biomass are especially hard for bacteria to digest, making the process inefficient. Chemical, physical, or medical processes, or several of them combined, can be useful for pre-treatment to make biomass easier to digest, but many of the current solutions are expensive or inefficient or rely on corrosive chemicals. In research supported by the European Regional Development Fund, published in AIP Advances by AIP Publishing, researchers at the Leibniz Institute of Plasma Science and Technology are testing plasma formation and biomass and finding a promising method for pre-treatment of biomass. Trying to get through this, man, that's a lot of words. Words, man. Sometimes words are like, dude, all up in your face. And they're like, dude, why are you piling up like that? And then sometimes he just just, just scissors through them like they're nothing. <clears throat> the plasma can be seen as a reactive gas, which contains populations of particles that can contain several electron volts of kinetic energy. This energy can be used to break the bond of the chemicals and break the bonds of molecules which, with which they interact. This is by Bruno Honorat, who is the author here. The most surprising thing was to be able to obtain plasma discharge conditions in a moving liquid. The presence of a flow considerably complicates the situation compared to all the other experimental setups studied in the literature. The work involves... Wow. So that's... Uh, so basically... <clears throat> doesn't really give the... Like, how much does this agree? But let's say the plasma liquid in interaction forms reactive species, including oxidizing agents such as hydroxyl radicals and hydroxin peroxides that help break down the biomass and decrease the viscosity or resistance to flow of the biomass material. In partnership with an industrial agricultural partner, the process will be further tested at full scale in a biogas plant. So we're going to have to keep this uh, on the back burner here. We'll put a pen in it. We'll put a pen in it. And we're going to see how this puppy goes. But got some 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 issues here. And now we've got the Egyptian company here. And you can see what one of these places looks like. <clears throat> Get up here and uh, just a little bio, a little biogas plant. Now, they mentioned something. And I just want to... Uh, look into it, and they were talking about uh, dry fermentation technology. So let's see if we can find what what's up with that, and then and then we'll punch this puppy in the head. Metaphorically, do not punch any actual puppies, but metaphorically, it's wonderful. 
metaphorically. All right, dry fermentation for organic waste and fine mature fine manure. All right, <clears throat> what we got here? Dry fermentation in a biogas plant involves for the fermentation of organic feedstocks to produce biogas under anaerobic conditions without atmospheric oxygen. Get on out of me. The solid fermentation plant consists of drivable, gas-tight, and acid-resistant concrete fermenter boxes, which are filled and empty with a time delay. About 12 to 24 hours before the biomass is introduced into the fermenter box, it is piled up or pushed on with the wheel loader to form a loose, well-mixed solid bed, usually outside the fermenter box. The solid bed thus prepared heats up due to the incoming atmospheric oxygen, which supports and accelerates the heat and moisture input at the beginning of fermentation. Subsequently, the substrate heap is fed into the fermenter box with the wheel loader, if necessary, with a shovel pusher, pusher shovel, of course, up to the previously defined filling level. After insertion on the impact wall, the fermenter box is closed with a gas tight gate. This, the fermentation substrate in the fermenter box is sprayed several times a day. Okay, so this is giving me the problem of what it's not telling me is what is the <clears throat> advantage here? Okay, in contrast to wet fermentation, dry fermentation offers numerous advantages in operating a biogas plant for agricultural municipalities. Further information. Okay, so that's what they're going to say. That's what they're going to say. Okay, so, so let's just see real quick. I got her. All right. Say something. I got this. No, I got nothing. I can't. I can't see anything. It's just this. It's just this. It's just this image. So it shows the RSD process, percolate activate, percolate tanks and gas storage, percolate collection shaft down here. You got the fermenter boxes, and then the gas is going through here, and uh, and then the collection shaft and all that, uh, all that, all that good stuff. All right. So whatever all that means, I think I'm going to leave it at that. So there you go. So we're going to be able to take, uh, by the way, a lot of that biomass is poop. By the way, if you haven't figured that out. So if we could take poop, even human poop, imagine there are people like, for instance, people use compost toilets and then they take the human urine and they use it to grow plants that they use for like feed plants or some people have aquaponics so they grow plants that they use for feeding the fish and I don't know how many people are using human manure to grow anything that humans eat but but it is used in various ways sometimes it's used in it's used to uh, set up in areas that uh, water is intended to run through that uh, ends up uh, well ends up being uh, it actually ends up purifying purif it's like a filter it helps purify water it's a gray water system there's there's all kinds of uh, possibilities but imagine if you could make uh, if you could turn your human poop into gas more effectively if uh, if introducing if, if plasma powering your poop would give you gas for your car instead of your butt that's 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 the future and with that I'm gonna go ahead and say, have a great rest of your day because, I mean, if you don't, who will? Seriously.